Hi, everyone. How are you? Happy Wednesday. It is Vintage Jewelry Party Wednesday, and I'm so excited to have you all here. If it is your first time joining us, welcome. I'm Veronica Stout. I am the founder of Vintage Meet Modern Jewelry Styling, and my passion is helping all of you lovely ladies look and feel your best by dressing in detail. So go ahead, say hello, let me know how everybody is doing, and uh, I'm excited to show you our latest finds. You can use the link above to shop and to add any of these treasures to your collection, and we have got a ton of beautiful pieces for you this week. So I always like to start off by showing you some of my favorites, and I have to say, quite a few of my favorites this week are actually off to new homes. Uh, that Joan Rivers piece uh, that was awesome, that set, that is off. Uh, we had that really cool Kirk's Folly for the unicorn earrings, those sold, and uh, a lot of other pieces that fabulous Juliana bracelet that we had. So lots of things are packed up and headed off to new homes, but I still have tons of gorgeous pieces. But this is definitely still one of my favorite pieces, and we just added this one. So this is a really gorgeous blue and citrine brooch. And this one I really love because it has just the most bright, beautiful blue color. It's not quite a light blue, but it's not as dark as like a navy or a sapphire. It's just, just this very pretty blue color. And then the center stones have this sort of citrine yellow sunshiny color. So this one is a gorgeous one. And we just added this one. And I'm trying this one actually on with a pair of vintage Avon earrings. And what I like about these is that they have sort of a similar kind of scroll, but you can see kind of like a little scallop design the same way that this sort of pinwheel flower does. So this is a nice option of being able to match up a classic earring uh, with a classic brooch style. And this one's really fun. This one's got like very gorgeous coloring to it. Um, hi girls. How is everybody? I'm saying hello to Michelle, Amy, Elaine, Rhonda. I know my wing girl, my wing man. I couldn't do anything without her. Leanne is joining us. But as I was saying, what I do really love about this earring is how nicely the size and the shape match up with each other. So they're really beautiful colors that are all coordinated together. And these just have such gorgeous vibrance to them. And they look really nice also with a variety of other colors too. So I have on this sort of lemony citrine color, but for those of you who like being able to see something that just pops against a classic white background, this one looks very lovely with any of your neutrals. So this would be a great accent of color if you're looking for color to add to even your neutrals, or if you like this kind of color scheme, be very easy to have this pop against different colors too. In fact, I have a sort of velvety color blazer and like a yellowy color, and this would look really pretty against it. So we've got that piece. That's definitely one of my favorites that we have this week. Uh, another favorite that I have this week is also this gorgeous Lisner piece. So this one is beautiful because this one is actually a combination of those lighter and those darker blue rhinestones that I was just talking about. This one's sort of your classic mid-century modern style design. It has some both open leaf work and some closed leaf work. It has a very light texturing uh, around the sides of the cast. And then it also has got beautiful rhinestones, as you can see, in both a light blue and a darker blue color. So this one is definitely one of my favorites. And it's another one that goes really nicely with a lot of different kinds of earrings that we have. So we've got this one. This is a vintage Crown Jafari, same era that we have with our pieces that are from uh, the mid-century modern from Lisner. So you can see that we still have that kind of sort of brush textured gold. This is a pretty option to wear with that one. Uh, I was just showing you off that it's very nice to be able to put this one uh, with this other classic Avon one that I'm showing you. And let's see, we also have a couple mid-century modern bracelets that go very nice with this one. So you can pick up, there's the V-Link Crown Trafari, which I like the way that that one looks. Uh, if you're looking to find a bracelet that's going to match up with this brooch. Hi, Michelle. Thank you for joining us, too. So Michelle was our big winner last week. We were doing a fun contest. So I'll come up with another one soon. If I look a little tired, we moved our daughter into college yesterday. It was an emotional day for me. I feel like today I just played with the jewelry as therapy, wrapped up orders, 
uh, took care of some paperwork, started working and looking at some other pieces, just kind of played around because I'm still kind of coming off of everything yesterday. So it's been a very busy Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday here. So I'm going to try not to tear up since my first baby is going to school. <laughs> um, but yes, so here I am. And now I'm showing you this gorgeous Lisner brooch that we have. And obviously, this one can go in a variety of different ways. If you want to wear it more up or you want to turn it more the other way, you could wear it in the center. Uh, the style of the brooch will really lend itself to however you want it to either fill your blouse, your lapel, or your jacket. And there are some really pretty earrings that you can put with this one. I am a big fan of the way that this particular Crown Shafari pair of earrings looks with this particular brooch. And it is, it's kind of fun. You know, I think somebody else was asking me about the signed pieces versus the not signed pieces. And this is one of those ones where I think that it's kind of the fun aspect of looking over actually on the website and then also taking a closer look at these pieces because this piece, the scroll work and the gold work is so, simil is so similar to the scroll work and the gold work that you see on the Avon that you also see on the Crown Shafari. So kind of all of these pieces work together nicely. Jill says, gorgeous, I want all the things. Well, I want all the things too, but not only that, and Jill is part of RV Ever After. She's a close friend of mine. We've known each other for years. She's getting married, uh, but her engagement photos with her and her fiance where they got engaged in Santorini were just on the cover of uh, like on the website for USA Today for travel brides because her dress was so gorgeous. Uh, and it was really, really beautiful. If you're not following her over at RV ever after, you definitely want to because the pictures that they show, man, I didn't even know that RVing life could be that way. It's actually way more glamping than I expected it to be. But in any case, this is that gorgeous dangling crown trafari earring. I'm a huge fan of this one. I think it's a great everyday earring uh, to wear. And I like the fact that it has a little bit of the drop. You know, typically I don't always wear dangling earrings. I'm more of like a cluster person. But I do like these because I think that you can very easily be able to wear them uh, both dressy and casual. And I think that they're a great daytime earring, even though they've got a little bit of a dangle to them. They're also very comfortable. They're very well balanced. Uh, and I, they go very nicely with a lot of the other great mid-century modern finds that we have this week. But I do really, really like this brooch a lot. So this is the blue and the green one. Now I'm going to switch and we'll go over to the other side with other colors. Speaking of other colors, and thank you for the compliments on the ring, Amy. We've got this one in stock. This one is a triple with both a purple and a pink tourmaline and a yellow diamond style CZ. And it's set in a like a squared off band styling. So this one is pretty, it's a great ring. I love all the different kinds of colors in it. But this is a brooch that I want to talk about next. I really like this one a lot. So this is an older piece. It's 40s era, and it has the garnet red at the top. It has like a lavender, a blue, and then it has a smoky rhinestone in the center. And what I do like about this is, well, it reminds me both of a crown in the styling, the way that it goes across, but at the same time, it also kind of reminds me of like a rainbow because it looks like it's got all the different sections of it. And then, of course, it has this very pretty delicate swag to detail. It even has a little bit of a chain that's hanging off on the side. Uh, but this one's a really elegant one, and it's very easy to wear, too. And there's a lot of other pretty pieces that go with it. And you can see this one pops very, very nicely against your whites and your creams and your brighter colors. But this one also, it lays really pretty on. I did kind of a video the other day where I was showing this one on and it looks very nice on. And it's also another one that's easy to mix with other pairs of earrings. That's why I always like to talk about the different kinds of earrings uh, that I would put with these different kinds of styles. Jill says, yes, I love crowns. So this one I like because I like anything that has like a little bit of a movement. And I really like the way that the swag looks. Like I think it looks very royal and very regal. And it reminds me of a lot of the more formal fun jewelry that we see when we talk about like uh, more traditional antique style jewelry, um, jewelry that's been passed down that we associate with royals and traditions and things like that. And so I really feel like you kind of get that vibe when you put this piece on. And I also like the fact that it does have this very pretty variation of color. 
We're so used to either seeing the Aurora Borealis with the iridescent or the brighter jewel tone colors. And this is kind of a nice mix of all three. It's also nice the way that it has a little bit of the delicate feature uh, below the fact that it's got this brooch with the rhinestones at the top. It's actually, like I said, it's a really easy one to wear. And yes, as Michelle points out, it's really unique. It's a little different than a lot of the other ones we have. I know Jill says, yes, I love all the colors. Well, that's me too. I love all the colors. And that's when I think one of the fun parts about the jewelry is, is that the vintage jewelry, if the colors are like this from pieces that are from the 1920s, 30s, 40s, 50s, the colors, they just can't be beat. The way that they are made, if they're this vibrant and this unique still, it's just a testament to how well made the pieces are. And so I'm putting back on that little vintage Avon earring that we had. And Michelle says that it reminds me of a lot of things that Joseph of Hollywood designed. I don't disagree. I think it does too. I think there are a lot of great movies that have 40s fashion referenced in them. Uh, what was this series? I um, If if Megan is on here, she just watched, oh, The Pursuit of Love too. That was a series that they just did on Netflix and I was watching that also. Uh, whether or not you like the story or not, it's another one where you can easily turn off the volume and you can just watch and you can just see the fashion, especially both characters have really wonderful styles. Of course, one's a little bit more conservative. The other one is definitely uh, more outgoing, but the stuff that she wears when she's in Paris are just absolutely gorgeous. Uh, the Bletchley Circle did an amazing 1940s fashion. That's one I haven't seen yet. I'll have to look that one up. I'm looking for something new to watch. Actually, just recently, speaking of that, I'll show that piece next. I just recently started rewatching Downton Abbey for fun. So this is one that we've probably gone through already three different times. And no, we don't watch this season over and over again. We don't actually watch very much TV. But I do like watching period type pieces and I really enjoy the fashion ones that I do enjoy the eye candy always in uh, I really like the movie Marie Antoinette I like the fashion in that one I really like watching Mad Men Mad Men has always got really great fashion I mean and you can also enjoy the uh, the set design as well as the costume design. Uh, it's nice also to see the evolution of the women on the show like the way that their roles changed throughout the seasons and then also like the way that the clothes picked up on that. And then of course, Mrs. Maisel, I know that Jill is on here. She's a huge uh, Mrs. Maisel fan too. There's actually some really fun facts about the costume designer. Like they said that like she wore a lot of blue last season uh, because it was like more about her independence and that that was something in the very beginning. So lots of different fun things to pick up. Um, but I'm going to look up that one on the British military. There's another one that I was just thinking of that somebody else told me it was really good. And this one has to do with, I want to say the sea. It has something to do with uh, ships and travels and things like that. Uh oh, here comes our friend. What happens if you order? Oh, you can just leave them on the side. I'll come help you in a bit. Mr. Michael is working very hard. Uh, he is actually helping out behind the scenes at Vintage Meat Modern. He is unstacking little jewelry boxes that we put the jewelry in and putting them into these little cubbies that we keep them organized in uh, because he is trying to earn some money to go to the Sox game next week. So he is doing his he is doing a good job with his. He said, he said, he goes, you know, all those little boxes that you guys get your jewelry in. He goes, I'm the one that's in charge of stacking them all up. <laughs> and he did a really great job, Michael. Yeah, Thank you. And just if you're wondering, it's, uh, yeah. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> it was very, very hot here. So you can see everybody is kind of falling their place after Victoria's one. It's crazy. So we have been talking about this 1940s brooch. I digress. Uh, we also have a really pair of gold earrings that have the scroll work. I like the way that these two, well, I know. the. Well, he wants, he's trying to visit as many ball fields as he wants. Somebody said socks and everybody knows that Michael's a Cubs fan, but Michael is trying to start his uh, goal of visiting other stadiums. So we are going to, he's going to a Sox game next. All right, so speaking of Downton Abbey, this necklace is so very, very, very Mary Crawley. So this is a jet necklace 
uh, and it has elongated beads. And there's a couple things that I'd like to point out about this one in terms of quality is that, well, first of all, it's 60 inches long. So it's a classic sauté length. And another thing that I want to point out about this one, because we had people really go crazy a few years ago. Like, I mean, I felt like a vintage antique jewelry fight was going to start over them. So we had an Art Deco sauté necklace. We had a longer one and we had a shorter one. We had one that had asymmetrical beads. Uh, we had one that was another really long one like this. The difference between this one and the one that we had before is if you take a close look, this one is connected by chain. It is not beaded and knotted. So this one's really a very, very high quality piece um, because this one has got the little beads that are inside. You can see there's little metal findings in between each of them. Now, what makes that special and what makes that great? Well, the first of which is that necklaces strung on silk or cord or whatever they are um, throughout the years, they do naturally loosen up. The fact that this is reinforced in between all of the beads with little metal findings obviously makes a piece that's like this from the true Art Deco era, something that already has working in its favor that it's just going to last longer because the materials are stronger. Uh, the next of which is it has a very lovely combination of different sizes of beads, as you can see. It has got the um, round ones, it has the smaller jet ones, and then it has these elongated ones. This one also has an older clasp. Uh, it has a clasp that has actually a little double ring and a catch in it. This is also nice because typically the ones that we have gotten in the past that have been this long are ones that you just naturally have to wrap over your head. Uh, but this one actually has a tiny little push in clasp and it actually has a double reinforcement in terms of a spring ring. So you can see it's got a clasp as well too. Now, of course, you saw, I know I showed you yesterday, this one is a really, really long one. So if you saw those pictures I put up of Mary Crawley yesterday, this is definitely the style of necklace that she had. I, the beads are also really beautiful. They're a classic jet. They're cool to the touch. It feels amazing when it's on. Uh, and it has just really nice ability to be able to lay different ways. You, of course, can wear this long, true flapper style. You can wear this layered up with other pieces. Uh, you can wear it doubled like I do. You know, I like things to be doubled. I like them to be at a longer length. Uh, but the beauty of this one is, is that you can see how nicely the beads with the different sizes of shapes actually lays on. So in terms of workmanship, quality, style, design, for those of you who have been looking for a true Art Deco era necklace, like I said, the last time we had one, there were people that were fighting over it. I'm kind of surprised that we actually still have this one, but that just means that it's waiting for the right person. So this one is a really gorgeous piece. If you have other jet jewelry, you can feel really good. Michelle says, lady, I bought this one. <laughs> Well, you're going to love it. This one's a really great piece. It's a really fun one. Um, it's one that you can really, truly enjoy over and over again. But like I said, I think what really, if you're going to join me on the jewelry journey, if you're going to join me on the joy of jewelry, those are the types of things that I do like to point out that when we're adding them to collections, the best part about them is when the materials as well as the craftsmanship is really reflective of something that's going to last a very long time. So I love this one. I want to see how you, um, and it is a really, I want to see how you wear it and it will definitely be a fun one to add to your collection. All right. But up next, uh Oh yes, friend. I finished people. <laughs> Good job, Michael. Good job. So all right, well, he's working hard to get those souvenir bats from all the different places that he's planning on visiting. So I had a question though earlier. So yesterday was Tuesday, Tuesday. I didn't have as much time to put up as many different posts because I was busy helping my daughter move into school, but I do have three pieces that absolutely go together. Fantastic. Uh, and it's super fun too. So for those of you who are just joining us, 
and you've never joined us before, remember, this is your lesson in your vintage jewelry terms. Some people call it new old stock. Other people call it dead stock. You've already heard me tell, say you many times. I don't like the word dead stock. None of this is dead. Um, this is new old stock. It's a pair of Laguna earrings. They are on the original card. And they feature this really beautiful gray iridescent Aurora Borealis with pearls. We have a classic gray silvery Aurora Borealis cha-cha bracelet. Goes perfectly with the Laguna earrings for those of you. And I wanted to point out, so I wore this because this is a perfect example. This shirt is a yellowy tone, but it has a silvery metallic thread running through it. And that's why it's so fun that if you can find some tops, uh, as well as you can find some different colors, you can see how fun it is to kind of match these sort of iridescent metallic pieces up with other pieces. So this is a fun way of being able to kind of pull this all together. Uh, the Laguna earrings, now this is what I'm saying. I like those little dangles that we showed earlier, but I do like these ones with the pearls. Uh, I like the kind of the button cluster style. I think that that's a style that's more becoming on me. I think it's a little easier to wear in terms of styling, but as you can see as I put them on. And then, of course, the piece that matches these all so fantastic is, is that we have this absolutely outstanding Juliana D and E brooch that has got these very red beads and it also has these open buffed gray navettes. And they all have the same iridescent styling that you're seeing in the center. And the red in this with the pink is so vibrant. It's so beautiful. And before I go ahead and I put it on against my own blouse, and you can see how pretty it even looks with a variety of different colors. You can see how pretty this looks just against your classic colors. So pretty. I love it with the pearls. I love it with the iridescence. I love it with the fact that it's got the bracelets. Everything can kind of go together real pretty. If you love wearing other classic pink tones and reds, I mean, this is a hot pink shell. You've seen me wear this before. I've worn this with navy. I've worn this with khakis. I've worn this with jeans, both black and blue. I've worn this tucked into a floral skirt. This is a really pretty example of how that these berries, they will look more pink or more red, all depending on what you put them with. But look at all that sparkle. It's just mesmerizing and so fun. And then of course, it also even looks very gorgeous, even against your classic black. You still see the way uh, that that color just pops against even those darker tones and you've got those beautiful iridescent colors and stylings. So all really pretty examples. Uh, this is a really lovely piece in terms of the puddling. You've got the puddling right there. You've got the open back stones. You've got the dog tooth. So it's got all of our indicators. Um, Julia, yes, this brooch looks so beautiful. Exactly. That's what I like being able to show the variety of different colors that you can put it against because people don't always think they think, you know, I don't know if I would really put it against that color or they would think that it looks, um, yes, I had this beautiful skirt from J crew, uh, for many years, nothing was wrong with it. Uh, it was just something that I had passed on. Like I said, my sister and I kind of trade clothes back and forth sometimes. So it was something that I had passed on back to her, something that I had actually worn for my nephews. Um, my nephew was also my godson, my first nephew. I wore for his baptism, but it was a skirt that had cherry blossoms on it, but it was green. It was very, very vibrant. And that's exactly what I mean. Like this would have looked absolutely outstanding with it. It would have brought out all the colors of the bright colored cherry blossoms, but it also would have looked really fantastic with this green that was behind it. So this is all very lovely condition, very wonderful pieces to kind of all put together. I love the gray iridescence. I think that this is a super fun style that you can wear with lots of different things. Uh, another fun, and I'll try to maybe I'll wear it tomorrow because I'm kind of trying to think ahead. This week really threw me for a loop. So it was supposed to be hot, but the heat index today was like 110 in the afternoon. So I'm wearing this very, very lightweight knit sweater. It's kind of a trapeze style, and I have it on with a pair of navy pants, but it's definitely actually what I was not planning on wearing. I was actually planning on wearing something that was a little bit more layered, but that's a perfect example of how always have some backup outfits um, in your closet so you can wear what you really want. But 
Moving on though, the Laguna earrings are very nice. They're in pristine condition. They're new old stock. They're on the original card. They are also signed Laguna on the back of them. Uh, the Cha-Cha bracelet is a perfect example of that if you're looking for a fun bracelet to go with a Laguna style earring like this, this would be a wonderful, happy marriage and relationship. The best kind, they're always going to get along. Uh, and then also, if you're looking for an earring or a bracelet to match up with this absolutely fantastic brooch, we've got options here. Lots and lots of beautiful options for you. So those are all new pieces that we have added to our collection this week, which I'm all about. Let's see, what else do we have here? We also, we've got an amazing pair of friction back. I'll talk a little bit about that for just a second. So the Monet friction backs, those are the ones that have the clips that are with them, but you adjust the tension, they don't snap. So they're kind of like a happy medium between an actual clip earring and they're also a happy medium between a screw back. So these are the large headlight crystals. Uh, very classic, chic, just bold. Uh, it's a minimalist rhinestone for those of us who still love our bling. And you just push them on. And the great part about the friction clips is that you can just adjust them however you need to during the day if you want to make them both a little bit light, looser or a little bit tighter. Obviously, sometimes what happens is, is as we go on during the day, we realize that maybe they're beginning to feel a little too tight, but that's the best part about it is you can just easily adjust them and it's not like the snapbacks, which are super tight. But these are a nice size. Um, the, you, they fill the earlobe really nicely. They're obviously larger than your classic diamond stud, but as you can see, even from me just kind of moving them around, they have a ton of sparkle and they have no darkness. So that's another really fun, beautiful earring to add. And of course, you know, if we're thinking about classic things just to really make ourselves look and feel our best, don't worry. This is one of those ones that's just like a little black dress. It is always going to go with whatever you decide to wear it with. So this is another super fun one. The Monet pieces are always a very, very high quality. Uh, Monet has the patent on the friction back clip. That was one of their important contributions to the designer and vintage costume jewelry world. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind and look at when you're looking at the Monet pieces. I know if Eileen is on here, she's a huge Monet and Trafari and Napier fan too. So great choices with this one. Uh, moving later, right along, as long as we're talking about other pieces, we also have a pair of Monet earrings that are also Monet and they are actually a friction back clip too but these are actually a hoop. Now I did want to point out and I did, I always thank you for your reviews. We did have someone who I thought really gave a really great review who said, I don't really wear clip earrings, but you've made me a convert. She said, I didn't realize that they don't pull on your lobe. And I thought to myself, that is a review worth sharing because if you have steered away from clip earrings thinking, well, they're not that comfortable, how would I wear them? Can I adjust them? Those are my tips. My tips are, and I say this because I'm somebody who has a metal sensitivity. So even when I wear posts and they're like 14 karat gold or stainless steel, my ears still itch. It has to do with my ear being pierced, but it does not happen to me when I wear clip earrings. So clips are great options for people who one have a thinning lobe or maybe have had some lobe drag during throughout the years uh, it's also a great option for people who have mental sensitivities and if you're looking at starting some clip earring collections for yourself i always like to tell people that's one of the beauties of the monet with the friction backs is you can really easily be able to adjust the tension on their own so this is a really fabulous pair of earrings because it's just very classic. For those of you who are looking for a nice classic gold hoop, this is like a nice size. It's not too big. It's not too small. Very easy to wear. Classic ribbed detail. And it'll go very nicely with a lot of other jewelry pieces that you might have. So you can think you can easily put uh, a boucher brooch with it. You could easily put another, I like, I brought both of these out because what I liked about them is they both had the ribbing detail that's going around. And if you look at the ribbing detail that you have on the earring, you can see 
kind of fun to sort of match up those different kinds of textures together. I actually probably would wear both of these together. I think this little Coro uh, and this one with the little potato pearls that are from Boucher, um, they actually go really nicely together. So I think that for those of you who like being able to things scatter pin style, this would be fun. And I like the way that this earring actually goes with this particular set of brooches. So, and I mean, I will do my best to see if I can get these on in front of you. It's not like the necklaces where I begin to get nervous that we're not going to be able to get the necklaces on with things. Okay, so there's one brooch. And you can see it pulls up in the same ribbing detail that you have. And I think these brooches actually might even be in the sales section. This one from Boucher, um, or spelled Boucher, um, this one from Boucher is actually a, a book piece. It's in a couple different books. I'm trying to decide which way I'm going to put this one. Yeah, I'm going to put it here. And if I look like I'm like going crazy while I'm doing this, it's because the way that the camera is set up, unlike your iPhone or something, it's mirroring me back in the other direction. And just like everybody else, you know, we all feel like we have a good side and a bad side. And I, of course, feel like I'm always putting it on on my bad side. But these are very excellent ideas of ways to be able to wear brooches together. Nice sizes and scales, nice mix to the same texture, nice addition of the same classic elements. So for those of you who love being able to maybe fill up a lapel like this, I really, really like this. This is one that will definitely garner you and get a few compliments. And for those of you who also like to really put a lot of different pieces, maybe on your jean jacket or your denim jacket, these are nice choices as well too. I didn't have a chance to put together my fall capsule pieces yet or talk a little bit about them yet because I've been busy moving my daughter to college. I know many of you have already done this before, but this is my first one. This is my baby. Uh, so obviously, and you know, you all know me, I like to plan. So this has been hard. <laughs> um, you know, so, and I'm one of those people though, who even on a good day, I do pride myself on being organized, but I always feel like I'm forgetting something. And we did, we got down there and we forgot light bulbs. So thankfully at Loyola, there's like a target right around the corner, um, but we were able to go down there and get some things so that we needed and it was great. But for those of you who are following me along, I will be talking about some of my fall jackets and my favorite brooches to wear on them and those types of things. And so this is actually a really nice way to put a bunch of different brooches together. This would look really nice on your fall jacket when the weather does change or look great on your jean jacket too. And I actually saw a really cute casual outfit that I thought would be just absolutely perfect for brooches. It was kind of a sateen jogger, so they were more formal. Um, and then a silk cami, and then it had a short cropped denim jacket. And it was very put together, very polished. It did not look like a pair of sweatpants, but I did think to myself, wow, that cropped jacket would be just perfect for brooches. So I'll be sure to share it with that. Um, and then of course, make some great brooch suggestions on how to accessorize it. So we've got the ribbed detailed earrings on the vintage Monet. We have got the ribbed detailings on the brooches, both 1940s, 1950s eras, and we kind of pulled it all together and have created this nice little harmonious look all together. So we've got those very pretty pieces. Uh, let's talk a little bit about a couple other pieces. So I mentioned about the Monet friction clip. And this one is going to take some digging, but I really thought that it was great to put it on because recently I worked with somebody who had an estate who had Boucher, who had Sphinx, who had Trafari, but from Alfred Philippe. And we have a really outstanding wave style brooch uh, that has these very small, you can see the reflection. So inside of all of these little textured crusts, there are some little dotted little pave set rhinestones. And this one has the heaviest 18 karat gold plating on it. It's beautiful. And I wore this one uh, with a cream shell that had an accordion pleat. And I actually wore it at the top. So I'm going to wear it up at the top here. And I... This one is one where you can see, I'd love to see this against different shades of green. This would be so beautiful. But... The brooch is not signed. 
And I have to tell you, I mean, I had to bring out like the super loop to in order to see this, but there is a very tiny, not patent pending action patent number on here. And the patent is to a piece that Alfred Philippe made. So he is, of course, one of the famous Crown Trafari, Three Kings founders, designers, as they say. Uh, and so this is a design that is attributed to him, at least in terms of patent numbers. Uh, but it is not a signed Jafari piece, but these have these beautiful wave ear crawlers and they actually match the brooch. And I think the brooch you can do in a lot of different ways. Uh, and also you have the variety of being able to put it with a lot of different colors. Obviously, the solid colors, if you put something darker, it's going to pop more against it. When I talk about the quality, again, the way that this plating is, it's so heavy. It's so nice. And you can see this now, how the classic gold plops against the classic black. So really just very, very lovely detailing, very lovely styling. Uh, the earrings make a very dramatic going up the ear, ear crawler style. Another really fabulous look, very beautiful uh, and just nice styling as well, too. So I'm very excited to be able to add these to anyone's collection because the quality is really outstanding. They are very, very lovely pieces. So we've got those. I mean, we've had so many great brooches this week. It's just been all about that brooch again. We've got the Lisner. Oh, we have this really outstanding, the pink and the smoke. We've got, I love this one with the little tassel. And moving on with some colors. This is another really great piece that we have. I did do this one for Tuesday, Tuesday, uh, or this and that. So this one is a really nice mid-century modern one. I think Elaine had mentioned that she really liked this one. This one is fun. It almost has like a leaf. It does. It has a leaf motif that is holding the articulation together with the different colored beads. And the beads do, you can see the colors a little bit better from behind. It's got like a red and a pink, and then it's got like a brighter red. So different shades of red and pink kind of peek out from this one. And obviously there's a lot of great different kinds of pieces that you would be able to wear this with. I always like kind of picking something that either is going to go that monochromatic route where you're going to kind of like have everything sort of fade together, or I like picking things that are going to pop against the color that you have on and be the statement piece. And so we've got this awesome bracelet. So beautiful. So fantastic. Uh, we actually have a cabled bangle. I have shown this one before, but for those of you who love to stack things, this would be a really, really great bracelet stack for those of you who like arm candy. I love the way that these look together. But for my ring lovers, wow, there are, I want you to think about this bracelet in terms of both rings that we have here at Vintage Meat Modern, but rings you might actually have in your jewelry box too. Uh, we have an absolutely fantastic pink tourmaline. And what I want to point out about this one is you see the way that you've got the same sort of channeled setting with the pink with the stones. You can bring out all the different shades of pink as well as I love that you can pull up kind of the same sort of width style that you see in the thickness of the bracelet. Really beautiful. Uh, we also have got a tourmaline and pave set. So this one has got the different shades of pink too, and it also has the same sort of bypass style. So that's kind of a neat option to be able to pair up a ring with either pinks or reds or rubies that you have. Also, like I said, it's fun to see the way that the band can kind of mimic the way that everything's going together. Like I said, I love being able to show you all the options. And for those of you who like things that are a little daintier, uh, we have an amethyst. So remember when I pulled out that amethyst, you can see you can pull out the purple color. So maybe you've got some February birthstones. I know I saw at least one February birthday baby on here. Uh, you can see the way that you can pull out the purpley, the plum colors by mixing some amethyst jewelry with this one. And you, of course, can even, we've got this sweet little pink double heart ring. You can bring out the different kinds of shades of pink with that. So if you're thinking about jewelry that you might have, or you're thinking about what kind of fun rings you can kind of all put together, this bracelet is just awesome in that there's a variety of colors that you can easily be able to put with it. 
And as always, you can see also like if you're somebody who wants to bring out just one of the colors that you see inside of the bracelet, this will look so beautiful with so many different shades of reds and pinks from your truer reds to more of your truer pinks. And this will pop lovely against paler colors as well too. And don't forget the ability to even mix and match it with purple. It'll be super fun. So lots of great options and this bracelet just feels so nice on. It's so thick, it's so well made uh, and it's really neat the way that it's got that double layer. But like I said, so if you go onto the website and you take a look at it, do take a look, you know, I'm showing you how it looks from the front, but do take a look at the back because the construction is also really wonderful. And it gives you a good example of all of the pretty colors that are actually peeking through on the other side. It's a really neat setting, isn't it? The way that it has like the leaves that are overlooping it. It's so fun. It's a great piece, really unique. I really love the colors too. All right, we also we have some genuine amethyst piece this week with some sterling silver. Uh, this came from a sterling silver collector. It came local, if you're an Illinois gal, um, came from a local area, nicest woman possible. Um, she had very, very lovely things, and she collected a lot of things throughout the years. We have an amethyst style, and these are very dark. They do have a dark oxidation to them. Uh, I did not polish up the silver, but these certainly would polish up nice and bright if you took a polishing cloth to them. And if you purchase them and you love them and you'd like me to polish them up for them, I will be more than happy to do that too. But there is a genuine amethyst pendant. Uh, it's a nice sterling silver one. Kind of sits like um, we have just the pendant. I don't have a chain, but I'm sure many of you already have a chain. And we have a pair of matching earrings as well as we have the beautiful earrings, which are a wire. And we also have got a very pretty pendant that matches it both with the tear shape. So we've got those pieces. Uh, we have a Hawaiian travel souvenir piece. Uh, this one's a really cool piece. This one actually is made of actual seashells. It was from a 1950s traveler, 1960s era. Uh, it is a piece that was sort of souvenir inspired. It is a genuine authentic piece from Hawaii and it has just the most beautiful soft natural colorings and it, it does look like a bouquet of flowers. It is all 100% seashells and they have been connected in the back on a piece of celluloid and it just has a very natural uh, it's very lightweight also, which makes it really fun. I have always said, and I've had this piece for a long time, and I never put it online. I don't know why. <laughs> um, but one of the things that I always said that I really liked about this piece is that for those of you who like to travel, or if you know someone who's going to be having a destination wedding, or maybe they'll be traveling afterwards, or I even thought that if you have someone who is having some sort of theme, uh, with a wedding or those types of things is that this would even make a really nice boutonniere type style piece for a gentleman on a jacket. So it's a very cool piece. Uh, it is layered. It's artistic. It has nice balance. It has beautiful colors. Um, the orangey color that you see that's in it is actually teeny, teeny, tiny little coral. Um, there's some little green and all of those open pieces that you see in the back that look like they're layered like open leaves are actually cut up segments of a shell. So it's really, really a cool piece. Uh, it is super fun and it's very, very well made. It's so, it's a, just a very, very nice piece. So if you're looking for something unique to add to your collection and it goes so pretty with so many other pieces, classic gold jewelry, you can do it with classic types of different sizes of shell. Uh, you know, you can even do it with mother of pearl. Look at how pretty even this little mother of pearl carp shell cameo earring looks uh, with this beautiful little shell brooch. This is an example of how we're taking a carved shell with the mother of pearl and the abalone. And then this is another example of a carved shell. So just really unique detailing and types of things. I love when we can talk about pieces that are made of different materials. So that's it. We also, we've got a tiny pair, um, very classic, very beautiful, very nice. These are an actual pair of uh, gold filled earrings. These are screwback. I did use the gem tester. I was so convinced. They are a genuine crystal, uh, but I was convinced that maybe that they were a pale gemstone of some form, but they didn't test for anything. But the gold 
The gold is a very heavy 120 12 karat gold plating, and it does say that it is also from a 1940s patent. So these are very, very nice. They do have the look of real. Um, this is a fantastic pair of small earrings. This is a great pair. So we've got these super pretty little pieces, and these are also screw back. Uh, they have an oval bezel setting, and when you're looking at the oval bezel setting, what's really beautiful about it is there's a little bit of crypt detail um, around the stones. So these are very nice. They sparkle like little diamonds. So for those of you who are looking for a stud earring that's the alternative to a pierced stud, this is a nice size. And I'm, of course, always a fan of ovals. I love oval stones in general. So... So we've got those earrings. And then um, last but not least, I'll kind of close things out here. We had a white shell pendant, which I packaged up today. Uh, so that piece is sold and is off to a new home. We do have a white shell pair of earrings, and these are actually a vintage Napier. And so we talked a little bit about the Monet friction back. So Napier, their answer to things is that they have a screw that's built into their clip. So you can adjust the tension on their earrings uh, by tightening and loosening the screw on the back of it. That's kind of their answer to the friction clip that was popular uh, when we're talking about the 1950s, 1960s era and patents. So that was their own patent since Monet had the patents, but we do have a sweet little pair of white little shell earrings that have the milk glass. And you know what? This would look really stunning with any other milk glass pieces that you might have or any white enameled ones. We have a really pretty white Monet bracelet that this would go nice. And we also have a white crown trafari beaded necklace that this would go very pretty with as well. And you could also do this with the Hobe pendant or brooch that we have. So we've got this awesome large, this is a Hobe piece, it's signed. You could always do something that was like that. And remember one of the fun things about this Monet piece, which I have shown before, is that, and this looks so beautiful, which is classic black. I'll put up the black shell in just a moment. So this is the Hobe shell and I do, like the way that you can see the white enamel work with the gold and that we have the white shell that all goes together. And again, if you wanna see how all of these things pop so pretty against your classic black, you can never go wrong with classic black and white and gold. So, um, and Michelle says, I have a few pieces of Hobe and you can never go wrong with them. Hobe is such another, it's another really interesting company. They're styles and their designs they change so many different times throughout the years and especially even starting in the 30s and in the 40s i mean hobe was known for these really intricate wire works with these little bezel set stones and many people thought they were czech and it was actually american hobe and then they grew into having pieces that were more of a higher end you know and michelle just mentioned they were like competing with a uh, uh, the higher end line of Coro with the Vendome and the Kramer. And then they also did these sort of more modernist, sort of just clean. Um, lots of people always are surprised when they're like, oh, this does not look like your typical Hobe. And it doesn't. But And that's what kind of makes it fun is it's unique. But for those of you who just really love wearing a lot of classic black because it's just your go-to, this is so elegant, so polished, so easy to wear. And I love the fact that you can wear this as a brooch, but it really makes an outstanding pendant. And it looks really nice with this very classic pair of Napier earrings. So easy the way you can just see that you can just bring it all together. So that's what I have. There's lots of beautiful, beautiful pieces to select from. If I haven't gotten back to you, like I said, life was a little busy around here. Um, I am praying for everyone who is going back to school, who has children going back to school, or is starting something in a new season of their life. I, we're winding down um, what I like to refer to as amazing August. I know August can seem like it's such a busy time of year for so many different people. Uh, but remember, we will be coming up on sustainable, stylish, self-care September. So we'll be all heading into the September month supporting ourselves uh, in a wonderful, 
celebration of personal style. And of course, what's the best part? The jewelry always fits. But I hope I have inspired you to add some vintage jewelry to your modern look. I hope you maybe learned a few things tonight. I hope that you got to enjoy some time with our other fellow vintage jewelry lovers. Uh, give yourselves all a sparkly hello and high five. It's always wonderful to get to spend time with all of you. And Please share, let people know that we're here. We really love being able to bring you treasures every single week. I love being able to source things. Uh, it means so much when we get to tell you all these different types of pieces. Michelle said her husband's back in the classroom for the first time since COVID, and that's exactly what I mean. We're just praying for everybody. Um, we want to make sure that everyone is off to a good start of the school year. Go pro education for everything. That's always what I'm talking about is all of our love for learning. So learning whatever you want to learn throughout the course of your life, whether you enjoy reading something that is in a book or you enjoy learning about things more hand on, uh, a lifetime of learning gets to share our best selves with other people. So, and that's what it's all about, sharing your sparkle everywhere you go. So on that note, I want to wish you all a really happy, fabulous Wednesday. Uh, my little nephew is two weeks old today. My daughter's going off to college. Uh, and we've all gotten to spend some time hanging out tonight talking about the joy of jewelry and seeing all the fun ways you can wear all these pieces. So thank you in advance for all of your orders. Everything that was purchased over the last few days, I packed them all up in your uh, tracking numbers should be uploading soon. I thank you for your patience. Like I said, it's still crazy around here. Uh, and now I hope you all have a really nice night. If it's hot where you are, like it's hot where we are, I hope you cool off. If you have storms, I hope they're okay. And uh, meeting back here again, we'll see you all again real soon. Bye.